in the woods Morning guys, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. Um, what I wanted to do was I wanted to kind of give you a short video, if you want to call it historical ramblings, that's okay. Um, but what I wanted to do in this journal of the TP was I was going through some old journals um, from Christopher Gist and some journals from a trading company in Fort Wayne, Indiana from 1805 or 1803, I believe it was. I've got it in my notes I'll pull out in a minute. And I was looking through things. I like to always verify my line of thought or my line of theory. And I've always stayed with the theory of the five C's of survivability. You know, I've always believed that those five things are what people needed to survive throughout time. And I was going through this journal today. It was very interesting to me looking down through the items that were listed as inventory in this trading company. I'd like to share those with you right now. Um, you have to excuse me. I'm going to have to put some spectacles on so I can read here and get my notes out. But... This information came from an inventory from the U.S. Trading House in Fort Wayne, Indiana in 1806. And there were other items on the list as well as these in their inventory, but most of the other items were what I would call unnecessary items, more like comfort items. They were jewelry, baubles, combs, uh, mirrors, which necessarily aren't, aren't, aren't unnecessary because we use them for first aid as well as, and as well as signaling but what I want to do is I want to cut through all the unnecessary stuff and I want to give you a list of things that they had that I believe they thought were important and I think you're going to see that it very much follows the five C's of survivability you're not going to see anything like a flint and steel kit on here or a hand drill or a bow drill set but what I see on here several times are references to powders and muskets and locks and rifles. And those things are all combustion devices. If you think about that, you know those guys were smart enough to figure out that was flint and steel technology and they could start a fire with a gun lock of a flint lock using char cloth, just like I showed in a past video. So here's the list. 21 copper kettles, that's containers. 38 rifles. 85 pounds of BB shot, okay, and shot was something that was very hard to recreate in a natural environment, and I talked to a very good friend of mine who's a historical reenactor who's been doing it for over 30 years uh, named Larry Zorn. He's a world-renowned gun maker, and he told me that probably what they did to make what they called swan shot was they would run a very thin bead of melted lead along a log or a piece of flat wood and chop it up into what they called swan shot if they had to have shot. Otherwise, they would just take a bunch of rocks out of the creek, patch them into a patch or a wadding, shove it down the barrel, and that's what they would shoot. So they had 85 pounds of this BB shot. There were two boxes of bar lead, which would just be bars of lead like these RCBS lead bars that were made in a lead mold from melted lead. Okay. Again, that goes to the fact that they needed to hunt for food. They were 38 beaver traps. 44 yards of various types of cloth, and it was, it was calico, it was yellow, it was blue, it was red, but it was different types of cloth that would affect cover, clothing, their first line of defense. 23 fishing lines with hooks, cordage. They didn't want to sit around and make fishing line if they could buy it ready-made. 37 wool blankets, again, goes to cover. 35 tomahawks and 119 axes. That would go to a cutting tool. And 116 bullet molds. Now let's go back for a minute and talk about tomahawks and axes. Obviously we talked about before the difference between a tomahawk and an axe is a tomahawk has a removable handle so that you can use that head for other tools. The axe is a fixed head. Doesn't necessarily mean that it was a large axe. Could have been a belt axe, very similar to the Fort Meigs, or very similar to a 1750s era axe. And I have one of those over here in this trunk. I'll grab real quick and show you. This is an axe that's a replica of an axe that was found in a 1750 house, a fortified home. This was found inside the walls, and the house was built in 1750s in Virginia. Okay, It looks very reminiscent of a shingling hatchet. But what it basically is, is a hammer-pulled axe. It's not a tomahawk. It's got a wedge in there to hold that handle in. So it is an axe, not a tomahawk. This would be considered a belt axe. This is a very typical 1750s style belt axe. As I said, it's copied after an artifact from the 1750s. So the axe may not have been a big, large 
hunter's axe, like a 19 inch axe or a forest axe. It could have been a belt axe, but there were 119 axes and 35 tomahawks. So if you look down through there, all of the five C's of survivability are covered by what's in this store, what's in this trading house. And these were items that they were trading with the Native Americans for furs. So you had containers in the copper kettles. You had your combustion in the muskets and rifles that you had. You had um, cloth and wool blankets for cover. You had fishing line for cordage. And then you had your cutting tools and tomahawks and axes. So all of those things are covered in that diary. And those are the things that I look at, you know, as I'm developing the Pathfinder system. And everything that you do uh, needs to be what we call a living document, or it's what I would call a living document. It's not going to stay the same forever. It's always going to change. And it's always based on experience, dirt time, and research. And research is very important. And I do a lot of research um, for the things that I do for YouTube, as well as the things that I teach. Research is very, very important. Research leads you to practical knowledge that you can use in the field. And then you have to practice that with dirt time to see if what you read is going to work for you. Or maybe you're going to discover something that works better. But looking at old journals like that and understanding what items were important to Native peoples or other people throughout history is important to help you understand what people really needed to survive. I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me for another Diary of the Teepee, another historical rambling. I just wanted to kind of walk through that with you guys today. Um, again, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything that you do for me, for my family, for my business, and I'll be back with another video very soon.